the stretch. And this was the Lakers. I don't think they led one time in this game. So the sense of urgency clearly not there. You kind of heard it too from LeBron James after the game. Just you know, it, it was a weird off season for him. He couldn't quite get his body the way he wanted to. He didn't know when the season was going to start. Like it just feels like that kind of vibe right now for the Lakers. Those guys don't care what happened in that first game. I mean, we heard the comments about the conversation with with AD and LeBron talking about. Man, I can't believe we just played a game today. I mean, that's the mentality of the Lakers. LeBron knows this ain't a sprint. So he ain't thinking about what his 40 time is. He's (laughs) thinking about what his time is when he crosses the finish line of the marathon. But there will be some intriguing moments as we find out how these other pieces fit in for the Lakers. How's Montrezl Harrell fit in? How's Dennis Schroeder fill in? Schroeder filled in very nicely, fitting into the puzzle in game one. Marcus Gasol was, was, was not very effective. How will he be a piece? The Lakers roster is better than it was a year ago. That's all you need to know. They won the title last year. Yikes. Watch out for this team. Biggest thing to me, though, Clippers, the 3-1 collapse versus the Nuggets, collapsed that lead in the first half of this one. But Paul George, who's known for making blunders off the court and had some blunders on the court, obviously down the stretch of the bubble, took care of business down the stretch. Paul George said, my team right now, I've got it. Yeah, got to stay focused. All right, to celebrate Festivus, we are asking on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed to name a feat of strength you saw in sports, air your grievances, or tell us a sports miracle you would like to see happen. Be a part of Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin Nation on the Dr. Pepper Twitter feed. ESPN Nation is presented by Dr. Pepper. It's official. College football is back, and so is your favorite Dr. Pepper-loving college football town, Fansville. Head to a store near you to treat your inner college football fan to an ice-cold 20-ounce Dr. Pepper today. So we're going to the NFL. One NFL wide receiver receiver who's being compared to T.O. for all the wrong reasons. That's after Jordan tells you about O'Reilly. Good to see you, obviously. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. Durant. Just the three over Wiggins. It's good for Kevin Durant. I try not to make too big of a deal out this whole thing. I've been playing this game since I was eight years old, so I just got to revert back to what I mean. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now my whole team, whole team. This one to me was all about Paul George. George at the top. A little step back three on its way, and good. It's just weird on all facets. I'm celebrating this story moment with our franchise and do it without our family and friends and our fans. Just, just, uh, just a weird day. Started from the bottom, now we're here. Started from the bottom, now my whole team. Good morning, everyone. Welcome on in. Keyshawn, J. Will, and Zubin. But instead, you get the Cornets for another day. Oh, yeah. Lucky all you guys. Um, I'm Shay Pepler Cornette. He is Jordan Cornette. Good morning to you, my dear. What's going on? How are you feeling this morning, Shay? I feel tired. I feel a little tired. I don't tired? These, I don't know how these cats do it this We're early every day. First 30 <laughs> seconds. We're the first 30 seconds I'll of the wake, show. I'll wake up in the next 20 minutes. I just need a little bit of juice. So what does that mean? Half. Nobody should tune in for the first 20? Are we, are we not going to be at our best? <laughs> Ready to rock. The lights are on. I know. I'm going to wake up really quick. I promise. Um, I woke up a little bit after last night's NBA debut. It was really exciting. Feels like I was just watching bubble play, but here we are now. Regular season, empty stadiums, and the NBA is fully underway. Again, this is Keyshawn, J. Will, Zubin. We're presented by Progressive Insurance, and all guests appear via the Shell Pennzoil performance line. So last night, I think the biggest story was the Brooklyn Nets and how impressive they looked. Kyrie Irving had 26 points. He had 24 in the first half. Kevin Durant, 22 points in 25 minutes. It was his first game since June of 2019, and that was Game 5 of the NBA Finals. I just think back to that time where we were watching that game of the NBA Finals. We were in Turks and Caicos on our honeymoon. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, Wow, has life changed since then. (laughs) So... um, (laughs) Yeah, that's when that was. That's wild. Isn't that cr- That's the last time we saw Kevin Durant play up until last night. And so the Brooklyn Nets best the Golden State Warriors 125 to 99. And you come away from that game thinking, okay, the Brooklyn Nets are good. They're really good. In fact, here's Tim Legler after the game on how good the Brooklyn Nets actually are. With Kevin Durant on your roster and he's 100% healthy the way he looked tonight, This team immediately gets thrust into a contender status, not just for the Eastern Conference, but potentially to win the whole thing. They've got that much talent. They've got that much depth. They've got some things to figure out along the way, and obviously Steve Nash is going to get better as the season goes on. But make no mistake about it, the Brooklyn Nets are on the scene. They're in the mix, and they're they're legit. Okay, and so what do you take away from what Legs just said? Uh, I I agree with everything he's saying, and I'll do him one better is – this is the team to beat in the East. 
they're, they're not one that, that's announced himself as contenders. It's the Nets East for the taking. Mm-hmm. Call it a knee-jerk reaction if you want. I know we haven't seen these other teams step up and, and perform yet coming out of the East, but the questions that I had for the Nets were uh, answered in one game. Mm-hmm. Kyrie looks great. Kevin Durant looks great and looks healthy. And they look good playing together. They look great playing together. Yep. There's so many options. They overwhelm you with the second unit with Karis LeVert, who's a legitimate star in his own right, could go to one of these other franchises in the league and be your go-to scorer. He only has to worry about providing offense for that second unit, so there's no drop-off. They all play unselfishly. They all guard. But the depth of this roster is going to overwhelm you all season, which leads me to my biggest observation from last night. Watching that Nets team play, Mm -hmm. the only thing that gets in the way of the Nets winning the East is if Marks and Nash decide to do the unthinkable. Go get James Harden. That'll mess this whole thing up. You watch that Nets team last night, and it's very obvious. They're good, meaning they're good and don't need anything else. All those things I talked about and why these Nets are dangerous and the team to beat in the East, pencil them into the NBA Finals, the only thing that messes it up if they try to get cute and add the third star to have a three-prong attack with James Harden in there. He messes it up. You don't need it. Do not overthink this. You have a team built to win it all. James Harden gets in the way. Don't fall in love with stars. The secret to success for this team is their depth. You lose that depth if you bring in James Harden. He'll require too many pieces, and what your biggest strength is will then become a weakness led by three stars. And why that's also important, if these guys can't stay healthy in Irving and in, in, in Durant, you've got depth to prop you up. You bring in Harden, it, it doesn't have the same feel. Do not bring in James Harden. Anybody that watched those Nets last night should know this team is perfect as is. Okay, that's a really good point because I heard Charles Charles Barkley say at halftime that this would be an opportunity for the Nets to go get James Harden because of their depth and because there are so many guys on that bench that could start on another team in the NBA. So why give them to somebody else? Keep them here. Be be greedy with it. Keep them all in Brooklyn. This team is perfect. The, the biggest question mark will be for them with this roster intact is will Steve Nash maneuver and navigate through the season, making sure everybody stays happy with their amount of playing time, uh, their usage, and their productivity? Because there are that many weapons for this team. As for Kyrie Irving, questions of, you know, is he going to be a distraction? No. His boys DeAndre Jordan and Kevin Durant are there. And you could say, well, they were there last year and there became a little bit of issue. They're going to win, and they're going to win a lot this year. And that's going to keep Kyrie Irving very happy. He's home. He's in Brooklyn. This thing is built beautifully. You watch 43 points score in the first quarter for the Nets, and I go, good luck, NBA. Good luck defending this team. Who are you going to stop? Who are you going to key in on? Everybody can hurt you, and they defend. (laughs) Okay, so this is Don't think about James Harden, Brooklyn. Don't need it. This is a broader question, but now does this balance out the East and the West a little bit more? Does this balance out? Does it balance out the power in the East and the West? The whole conversation last year was about the West. It was about the Rockets. It was about the Nuggets. It was about the obvious in the Clippers and the Lakers. That doesn't change. Sure, but now you have a a shirt. And then who are we talking about in the East? The Celtics, the Bucks. Now you have a team in the Nets that are, and we weren't, I mean, the Heat, obviously, down the wire, but I don't think that was a team that we were mentioning continuously. But now we are. But now we are. And so now I'm saying you have a team in the Nets that have superstars. They have depth. They have all the abilities to carry them throughout a season and into the NBA Finals. So is there ba- more balance now between the East and the There's West? There's just another team, Shay, that is, uh, uh, you could throw in a contender. I'm saying front runner in the East in these Nets. I think a lot of people would follow along with me and say, no, it's the Nets for the taking in the East, but you can't discount Giannis and Drew Holiday out there with that, and Chris Middleton with the Bucks. You can't discount the Heatles, the Heat culture, how we saw that lead them the to an NBA Finals last season. Uh, the Sixers, maybe do they go get James Harden and pair him with Joel Embiid and, is that and get where rid you of think Ben Simmons? He's going to go. I, I hope. I just hope that Brooklyn doesn't make the mistake of going to get James Harden. I do think if Harden gets moved, which is inevitable, it's just a matter of when, not if. I do see him being uh, rejoined there with Daryl Morey in Philly. And that becomes yet another team. 
The Celtics uh, with, with Jason Tatum as your legit go-to guy, Brad Stevens, I'll never discount them. There's a lot of teams worth watching. That is beautiful for the product. It's a very good thing. But right now, I see a Nets team that I say, I don't know if there's anybody better than them out there, except for the Lakers, who aren't playing with a sense of urgency in day one for me to truly... And he's 100% healthy the way he looked tonight. This team immediately gets thrust into a contender status, not just for the Eastern Conference, but potentially to win the whole thing. They've got that much talent. They've got that much depth. They've got some things to figure out along the way, and obviously Steve Nash is going to get better as the season goes on. But make no mistake about it, the Brooklyn Nets are on the scene. They're in the mix, and they're, they're legit. Okay, and so what do you take away from what Legs just said? Uh, I, I agree with everything he's saying, and I'll do him one better, is this is the team to beat in the East. They're, they're not one that, that's announced themselves as contenders. It's the Nets East for the taking. Call it a knee-jerk reaction if you want. I know we haven't seen these other teams step up and perform yet coming out of the East, but the questions that I had for the Nets were uh, answered in one game. Mm -hmm. Kyrie looks great. Kevin Durant looks great and looks healthy. And they look good playing together. They look great playing together. Yep. There's so many options. They overwhelm you with the second unit with Karis LeVert, who's a legitimate star in his own right, could go to one of these other franchises in the league and be your go-to scorer. He only has to worry about providing offense for that second unit, so there's no drop-off. They all play unselfishly. They all guard. But the depth of this roster is going to overwhelm you all season, which leads me to my biggest observation from last night. Watching that Nets team play, Mm -hmm. the only thing that gets in the way of the Nets winning the East is if Marks and Nash decide to do the unthinkable. Go get James Harden. That'll mess this whole thing up. You watch that Nets team last night, and it's very obvious. They're good, meaning they're good and don't need anything else. All those things I talked about and why these Nets are dangerous and the team to beat in the East, pencil them into the NBA Finals, the only thing that messes it up if they try to get cute and add the third star to have a three-prong attack with James Harden in there. He messes it up. You don't need it. Do not overthink this. You have a team built to win it all. James Harden gets in the way. Don't fall in love with stars. The secret to success for this team is their depth. You lose that depth if you bring in James Harden. He'll require too many pieces, and what your biggest strength is will then become a weakness led by three stars. And why that's also important, if these guys can't stay healthy in Irving and in, in, in Durant, you've got depth to prop you up. You bring in Harden, it, it doesn't have the same feel. Do not bring in James Harden. Anybody that watched those Nets last night should know this team is perfect as is. Okay, that's a really good point because I heard Charles Charles Barkley say at halftime that this would be an opportunity for the Nets to go get James Harden because of their depth and because there are so many guys on that bench that could start on another team in the NBA. So why give them to somebody else? Keep them here. Be, be greedy with it. Keep them all in Brooklyn. This team is perfect. The, the biggest question mark will be for them with this roster intact is will Steve Nash maneuver and navigate through the season, making sure everybody stays happy with their amount of playing time, uh, their usage, and their productivity because there are that many weapons for this team. As for Kyrie Irving, questions of, you know, is he going to be a distraction? No. His boys DeAndre Jordan and Kevin Durant are there. And you could say, well, they were there last year and there became a little bit of issue. They're going to win, and they're going to win a lot this year. And that's going to keep Kyrie Irving very happy. He's home. He's in Brooklyn. This thing is built beautifully. You watch 43 points score in the first quarter for the Nets, and I go, good luck, NBA. Good luck defending this team. Who are you going to stop? Who are you going to key in on? Everybody can hurt you, and they defend. Okay, so this is probably, Don't think about James Harden, Brooklyn. Don't need it. This is a broader question, but now does this balance out the East and the West a little bit more? Does this balance out... Does it balance out the power in the East and the West? The whole conversation last year was about the West. It was about the Rockets. It was about the Nuggets. It was about the obvious in the Clippers and the that Lakers. That doesn't change. Sure, but now you have a, a shirt... And then who are we talking about in the East? The Celtics, the Bucks. Now you have a team in the Nets that are... And we weren't, I mean, the Heat, obviously, down the wire, but I don't think that was a team that we were mentioning 
continuously. But now we season, are. But now we are. And so now I'm saying you have a team in the Nets that have superstars. They have depth. They have all the abilities to carry them throughout a season and into the NBA Finals. So is there ba- more balance now between the East and the There's West? There's just another team, Shay, that is uh, – uh, you could throw in a contender. I'm saying front runner in the East in these Nets. I think a lot of people would follow along with me and say, no, it's the Nets for the taking in the East, but you can't discount Giannis and Drew Holiday out there with that, and Chris Middleton with the Bucks. You can't discount the Heatles, the Heat culture, how we saw that lead them the to an NBA Finals last season. Uh, the Sixers, maybe do they go get James Harden and pair him with Joel Embiid and, is that and get where you rid think of at Ben this point Simmons? He's going to go. I, I hope, I just hope that Brooklyn doesn't make the mistake of going to get James Harden. I do think if Harden gets moved, which is inevitable, it's just a matter of when, not if, I do see him being uh, rejoined there with Daryl Morey in Philly. And that becomes yet another team. The Celtics, uh, with with Jason Tatum as your legit go-to guy, Brad Stevens, I'll never discount them. There's a lot of teams worth watching. That is beautiful for the product. It's a very good thing. But right now, I see a Nets team that I say, I don't know if there's anybody better than them out there, except for the Lakers who aren't playing with a sense of urgency in day one for me to truly know who they are yet, but I know they